Hi everyone and welcome back. I apologize for taking a little extra time to get this out to you. Uh, there's been an awful lot going on which I'll be sharing in other audio and video comments uh, as we move forward. Um, be working on those today as a matter of fact. But let's talk about Annabelle. There's an awful lot to talk about here. This is obviously the most famous object in the uh, in the museum. Having said that, there's a lot going on there, and I'm not sure how much of what we are told is correct. Um, you have to remember with my grandparents, um, they're, and I, I know I've said this many times, but their views have changed over the years, and that this is a field of uh, research, and that's that's perfectly acceptable. It's the way things should be. You know, when they first started out, they didn't even believe in demons. Um, and today, I would be hard pressed to say that they exist. And you know, that's a weird thing, you know, <laughs> for me to say when I'm an exorcist. But it's true. In my opinion, um, my grandmother unbelievable psychic and she could sense things that would blow your mind I saw her stand outside a haunted house that she had never been in and pick up on a specter of a fat butcher with a bloody apron uh, and the smell of rotting meat in the house and everything else things that the local reporter knew but had not yet written up he was sharing the, the notes with me um, as she was talking. It was extraordinary. So she was able to sense things that no one else I've ever seen could sense. But she saw Annabelle and she was certain it was demonic. She felt that this energy, which believe me, I can feel these energies myself, was so disgusting, so heavy, so evil that it absolutely must be demonic now in my experience we can create something like that it's called an egregore or a tulpa it's also known as a thought form or self-manifestation and when annabelle first had been brought into the home the the um the women poured their love into this doll you know, they, they just thought it was adorable, and they loved it, and they brought it with them everywhere. And when it finally moved, when they had poured so much energy into it that it took on a life of its own, at first they were excited, and they brought in the medium, and the medium definitely got everything wrong. Um, again, a reason I don't trust psychics, even myself, without evidence. Um, they should have done background search. They should have looked to see if this Annabelle child had ever truly existed, which, of course, it hadn't. But once the doll started moving, once they got this story, once it started leaving messages and actually did take on a life of its own, excuse me, <coughs> they started to get creeped out and as soon as that happened as soon as they started feeding it negative energy then the thing became dangerous the thing became deadly so that is my personal uh theory on what annabelle is but having said that there are other stories that are not in that chapter and i'd like to share a couple of those with you a little no inside information. Now, there's a story that's out on the internet about a young man and his girlfriend who would come on a motorcycle to see the, the museum. And he had challenged the doll and made fun of the doll. And on the way home, Annabelle appeared to them and they ran into a tree. He was killed instantly and the girl lived to tell the story. I honestly don't believe that's true, even though I know my grandfather has said that story. Um, what I believe is he took a true story, a true case, 
um, and he changed some of the details to protect the person involved. That person was Father Bill Charbonneau, and I can talk about him today because Father Bill is no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, here's another little insight for you. Um, my grandfather, I, the only time I ever saw him go to uh, church was for work. He never went to Mass, as far as I know. Um, but every Christmas Eve, my grandmother was very devout and would go constantly, but every Christmas Eve uh, for midnight Mass, we would go to Father Bill Charbonneau's church, my grandmother and my sister and I, and we would go for to see him. He was a wonderful, sweet, young priest in the 70s, um, just, you know, one of these young men who was full of religious fervor and um, had a wonderful way of sharing the Word of God. And he always made a wonderful impact on me. But he had bought a brand new car, and this was in the mid-70s. Um, Annabelle had been in the house for about six, seven years, and um, he wanted to show off, Father Bill wanted to show off his brand new car to my grandparents. And afterward, he said to my grandfather, Ed, I hear you've got a doll that attacks people. And my, grandf my grandfather said, yes, Father, it's downstairs in the basement. Would you like to see it? My grandfather had what he called his Halloween room uh, underneath the living room. It was this uh, field stone floor, uh, creepy little room uh, that was our basement. And from there, you could go down a corridor out of the house uh, and into the museum. But at that point, Annabelle was still in the in the basement in a rocking chair. And Father Bill walks up to the doll, picks it up, throws it across the room, and says, God is stronger than the devil. And my grandfather, oh, he just shook his head and he said, Yes, Father, God is stronger than the devil, but no man is. And on his way home that night, Father Bill was driving down the highway in his brand new car, and this bright light came out of the sky. And just before he veered off the road and into um, a ditch between the, the two sides of the highway, he swore he saw Annabelle in the halo of the light. The car was completely shredded, destroyed, and somehow, miraculously, Father Bill did survive, but he did break his leg. It was something that people, it, it made an impact on me. You don't challenge these things without good reason. Um, you know, there's this procedure that we do sometimes do, religious provocation, where we try to figure out what we're dealing with by provoking it. It is something that should only be done in the most extreme circumstances and only when we are truly protecting ourselves. It's not something I would ever recommend of anyone ever. In the in the greatest number of cases, going in with complete respect for what you're dealing with is far more intelligent and far more um, practical. Um, we're dealing with vipers, uh, monsters that can truly kill. So it's much, much better to keep that in mind. On another case um, with Annabelle, my grandmother was helping the local police um, with a homicide case, I believe it was. It might have been a missing person. I can't recall now. Um, and she did this kind of often. You know, she was very good with that. And afterward, the homicide cop uh, wanted to see the museum. And my grandfather, being who my grandfather was, he loved the police. Um, he was more than happy to show it off. And the cop said, you know, Ed, of all the stuff in this museum, the one thing that I am most fascinated by is that doll. And by this point, Annabelle was contained in the, in the box with all of the religious items and the prayers and everything set around it to seal that, that energy in to protect people from it. At that point, my grandfather had to take a phone call, and so he went upstairs to take the call, and he 
just said to the cop, you know, listen, I'll leave you down here, but don't touch anything, okay? Within just a couple of minutes, this big, burly, middle-aged homicide detective comes running up the stairs, white as a ghost. And he wouldn't tell my grandfather what had happened, but he said he would tell my grandmother as long as she swore never to tell another person. And she never had. But my grandfather went down into the museum, and the place looked like it had been torn apart by a tornado. And the door to Annabelle's box had been opened. My grandfather knew immediately what had happened. He had, the police officer had been so fascinated by this thing that he had opened the door and his energy and the doll's energy had interacted and it attacked. And this is why the museum has never truly been a public venue. It was never something that you could just go to anytime you wanted. It was only by special invitation, under special circumstances, and we were very, very careful to instruct people never to touch anything. Because if you're that person who is open to that particular item, then your energy interacting with it can create an attachment, and it can then reach out and hurt you. This is the reality of what we deal with, and this is the story of Annabelle. Get ready for our next chapter of The Demonologist, which I will also be doing today. God bless you all. Thank you again for supporting the Foundation and supporting our work. You have no idea how much it means to us. Um, We couldn't really be half as effective without all of you.